comments from council members. Uh, we just get a couple of very quick updates on two items, the Mills RO circuit that we just heard about this week, and also uh, where are we with fiber to the home at Shelter Creek? Good evening again. Um, <clears throat> Kind of ironic that uh, we came to council tonight to uh, close out the Crestmo RO uh, streetlight outage um, contract, and we're having another outage again. Um, but um, so the, the city experienced a streetlight outage um, last Friday, and another regulated output uh, circuit uh, within the Mills Park area. And and this map uh, shows the location of all the streets um, that are affected by the outage. And total of 50 streetlights uh, are connected to the RO, which is located. Um, near Genevin and Cedar, as indicated by the, the red dot there. Um, even though they look to be in a separate location, they are in fact uh, connected on uh, this one circuit. And then some of the streets that are affected are um, Magnolias, you know, Sycamore, Cypress, and Olive Court, uh, Williams Avenue, uh, Park Avenue, Hazel, Chestnut, uh, Cedar, Pepper Redwood, and Hawthorne. Uh, since, it, since the outage was known last Friday, staff began investigating the issue Several potholes were excavated along Park Avenue to determine the condition of the existing underground wires. Um, here's some pictures of what it looks like there. As you can see, um, underground wires are directly buried, uh, unlike what we experienced in the Crestmore RO, which were in a conduit. Uh, the insulation on these wires have uh, burned off, uh, leaving only the conductor exposed. Um, so you can see another pictures here. Um, Staff also performed uh, potholes at um, other areas within the circuit. It's um, a redwood, cedar, and pepper, these, uh, the, the locations that are uh, inside this uh, green oval there, um, to determine whether the underground wires were installed within the conduit or not. And staff uh, determined that it was in a conduit, so, which is a, a good thing. Um, and currently staff is trying to assess the issue and have been coordinated with PG&E to determine whether we can isolate this RO into two areas, uh, similar to what we did over in the Crestmore outage. Um, since the underground wires are within the conduit, this location within the uh, oval, the thought is to work with pg &E to isolate the RO circuit and to energize those street lights in that area and, um, and have it turn back on. And, and once the RO is isolated, we can determine a permanent solution for the other area. Um, the city had a conference call with pg &E this afternoon uh, pg &E requested the city to submit an application to the service planning department for removal of the half of this RO and um, circuit. And pg &E acknowledged that they can help uh, split the RO, but will back charge the city for their work. Uh, so no cost information were provided by pg &E during the conference call. And pg &E will also need to evaluate whether splitting the RO circuit will require a smaller transformer if the work for the other area is prolonged. Um, there's currently no commitment uh, on the schedule uh, from bg &E, but they stated that they will help fast-track the application once it's in the, uh, the queue. And the city has been receiving calls from residents inquiring about the streetlight issue. And currently, the city has already prepared a letter to be sent to the residents informing them about the outage. Uh, within the letter, the city is requesting residents to have the streetlights adjacent to their homes um, to provide temporary power, as they did in the, uh, the Crestmore RO uh, neighborhood, um, and um, we are hoping the residents will come forward not to only help their city, not to only help the city, but also their neighborhood as well to light the, uh, the street light. And the staff has already also coordinated with the police department to increase patrols within the area, and uh, public services staff is continuing to work on this issue, and we'll be evaluating the locations to deploy these uh, solar LED lights that we purchased for the last um, uh, Chris Moore outage. And uh, we have 10 in possessions, and we're anticipating to purchase additional LED um, streetlights. And we're currently unsure when the streetlights will be back on, but doing the best we can to get this you know, resolved. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Chair. And again, I know it's a comment. Well, I guess it's a council member's comment. So question is, or comment is, um, the solar lights that we purchased for the other, um, how long will that take to get up? or are they already on their way up? Um, we have to determine the location because it can only work at a certain street light uh, because of the, um, the direction of the sun. Otherwise, it doesn't work really well. So we have to determine the location uh, to best put the solar lights. And some of the, 
the street light um, poles are relatively old and it won't be able to handle the weight of this. Um, uh, this Understood. Picture. So, what's the timeline that you think? It's going to go up tomorrow. It could, it could go up as soon as tomorrow. Okay. Yes. And when is the letter going to go out to the residents asking for their, uh, those that can possibly assist? I'm sorry, say that again? When is the letter going to go out to the residents that can possibly assist? It can go as early as tomorrow as well. I, I don't say that if, if you can. It's, it's fine. I understand. I just want to know a timeline. So if I get calls from the past email I received that I'm more up to date and I can uh, respond or at least direct them to somebody specifically if they'd like to assist. The letter's been drafted and we are also have the mailing labels already created. And Beautiful. all we have to do is make Correct. copies and stuff envelopes and, and, and send it out. Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm just, just like uh, up in Crestmore, um, is there a safety issue? And there's been talk about, you know, warning people that uh, it's, it may be a while before anything happens, but I want to get mobilized with the temporary lighting as soon as we can and get that letter out. Let everyone know that we're on it. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I was going to say, I was going to offer to go door to door and just hand them out, but... Uh, I think everyone that's got a dark street, that's every resident on that dark street needs to needs to get uh, notification within the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. okay. Steve, this is the cable television uh, <laughs> update on the fiber at Shelter Creek. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you know, back in May, the end of May, you approved a project at Shelter Creek for a fiber to the home. Uh, project and pending the final contracts the contractor began gearing up in June and staff ordered all the equipment necessary for the head end and uh, for the equipment for the installation and the field work began in July with the contractor and I do want to mention that the staff at the cable department is very excited about this project they're very energized and and thrilled to be to working on a project of this of this type um, Again, you know, we've had fiber in our system for 18, 20 to 20 years already, um, but this is to the homes. This is a different, different project, and, it, and it's a pretty exciting project. Um, first thing we had to do is bring in more fiber into Shelter Creek. We've had fiber into that area already because we have a fiber system, but we brought in a, what they call a 48-count fiber system into that area underground. And to each building, we ran 24-count fibers um, underground. And that took a little bit of time because there were some problems with the conduits had been crushed. They've been damage, so we had to dig up some, some of that, but uh, we were able to get them all in. The plan was revised a little bit. Instead of doing each building, finishing the building, moving to the next building, we decided that in the interest of more efficient uh, work, that we should get all the fiber installed into all the buildings and, and complete all that work, and, and then we'll go into the units one building at a time. So that's what we're doing. Um, we, we're also required to put all of our fiber inside a conduit which it is today, and we'll be following up with that again with all our fiber. So there's a band around each building. The band is removed, our fiber has been put in, and then the band is replaced. And if there's any damage to the wood, that has been replaced too, uh, because we've been required to do that. So it's a lot of work that's been done up there. Um, we've also installed, we have boxes under some of the patios, about 22 in each building, uh, that have electronic gear inside them. Those are going to be removed. All the electronics are going to come out. And but we did put smaller boxes in there for splicing the fiber to each, to each unit from there. Um, again, to re just to remember, there won't be powering uh, at the complex. It'll all be powered from either your unit or from the head end, situ you know, the head end where, it, where it originates from. So the boxes will not, no longer have power. We don't need to access them as often, probably very few times. So we'll be, you know, there'll be less um, impact on the residents there as well. Uh, simultaneously, while this has been going on, we've put all of the electronic gear in the head end as well. Um, it's not all complete, but today we did fire up our first uh, remote box in, our, in the cable office, and we got pictures down there, and we got internet and all that through the fiber um, th th with this new gear. So we're pretty, pretty excited about that, but uh, we have you know, a lot more testing to do, but uh, it is working the way it's supposed to. Um, we do work uh, closely with both the contractor and the other vendors to to meet, meet these deadlines that we've given ourselves. Um, next week, uh, maybe next week, maybe the week after, we're getting pretty close, we're gonna run the actual fiber drops from each of those little boxes I talked about under the patios to each unit. So that's 1,300 units that's, that, that we have to run to. So there's, you know, like I say, there's quite a bit of, of the scope of work is pretty, 
heavy, so I want you to understand that we are we're working through that. Um, our, our plan, though, is to install customers by the 1st of October, so we're, we're getting close, and that's when we'll actually go into to customers' home. We're anticipating doing about 20, 25 a day, um, and we haven't completely worked out the schedule with customers yet because we're trying to see what, how we can get done during the regular day before we have to do evening and Saturday hours, um, but that will be done. Um, I do want to mention, uh, so that's pretty much where we are at this point. I do want to mention that these contractors uh, have been very cooperative thus far. Uh, they work well with our staff, they're working well with our staff, and actually the management at Shelter Creek has been, you know, on them as well, and they approved everything that they, they're doing, and so it's been working pretty well. There's a lot of fiber projects in the Bay Area, and so if the council does decide they want to continue with other projects, you know, we may want to look at keeping this crew before they go somewhere else. So just to keep that in mind, I know we need to find the funding, <laughs> but I do want to, I want to put that out there. Um, again, the project is still in schedule to be completed at the end of November. Thank you, Steve. Can I get a couple questions? Go ahead. Time for questions. So we're within, are we, how are we with our budget, construction budget? Are we? Right, are we right now we're, all our estimates are slightly under. Oh, nice. I mean, slightly meaning by $15,000, so we're, we're good. We haven't spent all the money yet, but we're still, you know. And the customer response, as, as more people are aware that they're putting the fiber in, and you're increasing your subscribers? So I've, I've given you folks, um, I, to Connie and, and to you as well, the subscriber numbers, that, the increase that we've had since we've started talking about this project, and it's about 60 subscribers since uh, December, January timeframe when we met with Shelter Creek and they talked about infrastructure and AT&T coming in and, and, and so we have seen without even touching one home yet, we have, we have seen an increase. And I, and I can tell you, I do the numbers every month, it's really the only facility that is gaining subscribers every month. So, you know, most, most you know, we lose here and there video and, and internet here and there, but that is gaining every month. So it's a good, um, it's a good sign. Right. But there is a, what they call a halo effect, you know, mm -hmm. when the people know it's coming, they don't renew their contracts with AT&T, so we recommend they don't do that and that they <laughs> wait for us to get in there and give them And money. so is that a r approximately 20% increase in, in subscribers? Uh, it's about 10% right oh, now. Oh, 10%. Yeah, a little okay. under 10, yeah. Okay. It's, it's about, actually about 8%, I think. And wait till we get it turned on. Well, we're, we're going to be right. doing a, you know, we're going to be out there selling it heavily, um, uh, and so we will, we will meet the number. Excellent. We, we okay. Any other comments from council members? Through the chair. Thank you. Um, last meeting, we approved a $50,000 expenditure through the Art and Culture Fund, Commission's Fund, and there was some concern expressed about that uh, because we did not consult with the Art and Culture Commission doing that. So I would like us to look at two things. One, backfilling their $50,000 um, through general fund money. And two, having staff write up some kind of policy that says we, as a council, not ex um, dip into any other commissioners, commission's funds without consulting them. So uh, if that's something that the council uh, is interested in, I would like us to do that. Okay. I think you just gave it to staff. It's, I'm well, interested, Irene, if that's what well, you were asking. You, you were well, asking a question, so I wanted <laughs> I, I to respond to you. I think we need three, at least three people nodding. Um, so. Yes, I would be interested okay, to, everyone's to, in that, okay. to come back. With yeah, more to come back. It's not a vote with three nods. Right. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Through the chair. Uh, Rico. Oh. Um, I wanted to say that uh, this last weekend, uh, we had a busy, busy weekend in San Bruno, from soccer fest to movie and concert and all kinds of activities that were occurring in town. Um, there was also a, a memorial tournament that was at Lions Field. I think it was their fifth annual. It was to help raise funds for two persons that were killed uh, on San Bernardino Avenue in Sneath. And what I, the reason I bring this up is A, it was a great activity and, and program, but also as I went to the various uh, activities on Friday, I saw some of our staff there from Parks and Rec, from police, fire, so I want to thank the staff for uh, going out into the community and making your presence available and there. But I also wanted to make mention to community development. David, I can tell you that as they embarked upon switching a hit-a-thon to a car show and doing it for the first time, there are, of course, uh, bumps in the road, pun intended, 
and um, people learn as they go. But the cause is deserving. And this year they went out and actually helped a couple other families in need. But what I heard from some of those organizing it was the cooperation and the assistance they received from community development. And on Friday when I picked up my packet and they were doing their last minute, uh, let's get it all done and taken care of and have a successful weekend, I witnessed it firsthand. Um, I saw the commitment, I saw the caring, and I saw the good customer service that wasn't just doing what they had to do, they went beyond the call of duty to make sure it got done. So I want to compliment the community development staff that was engaged and assisted these folks in ensuring a successful event for the car show, which they had 142 or 43 cars, depends who you talk to. So for their first go around, they did well. And I want to thank the staff that assisted in that endeavor. OK, hey, anyone else? I, I'm sorry, I have one more. Um, on Saturday, September 17th, is the coastal cleanup. And some of you, even though we don't have a coast, we are cleaning up some of San Bruno. So if you are interested, it is between 9 and noon. And we are meeting at the in front of the Centennial Mural that is on Huntington Avenue by the train station. And there is parking. We have permission for parking in the um, Artichoke Joe's Casino lot closest to the uh, Great Separation. So if you want to come, we have all the equipment and come and help clean up San Bruno again. Okay. Any other council members' comments? Chair? Marty. Yes. Um, just wanted to let uh, everybody know about the activity on nextdoor.com. There's a, there's a, there, if you haven't, for those watching, if, if you haven't joined yet, it's, it, it's an excellent way to hear what your neighbors are, are, are looking into. And there's a lot of complaints, but there still is a lot of good things of, of people trying to help help find a dog or a cat or whatever it may be. But when, when you complain, it helps to kind of to realize that you can't just complain online. It helps if you complain to the right people. And I'm doing my best to kind of respond and direct people into to the, who is that right person to contact. And we are, we are, there are staff that are responding to the problems that our people are putting out there. So I encourage you to c continue to let us know what we can do to help make your neighborhood nicer. Just that you need to take that other step about finding out who is it that you need to call, whether it be public works, whether it be community development. And a number of people have been complaining about parking on sidewalks. And there is a process for that. Is, is contacting our police department at the non-emergency number, which is 616-7100, contacting Sergeant Ryan Johansson online. Um, and it is my understanding that the police come out if there's no emergency going on. And, and so, so you, you might have to call in a couple times. And it's just that that's what it takes. So. Uh, don't be discouraged, and staff will respond. Okay. Anything else under council members? 